All right, we gave Jason and Anna Wyatt the block off. You got <laughs> Ted and Julian here. Yard work season is upon us, and as temperatures continue to rise, that means more people, of course, will be outside working on their homes and making sure they're nice for the spring and summer. Yeah, got to do that yard work, but it also means that a higher chance of running into those unwanted guests, mm -hmm. they could be at your door, in a tree, behind a rock, lurking in your lawn. That's right. Of course, we're talking about snakes, nope ropes, depending on what you want to call them. The good news <laughs> is most are harmless, but how do you know which ones to stay away from? Yeah, that's the big question here. Joining us live is Jeff Hall with the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission. Jeff, we had to call you in because we need <laughs> backup. We don't like seeing these snakes out there. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Sometimes those uh, no shoulders get uh, a little bit less love, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In, in terms of, of the snakes that are being seen more and more, the, the first thought is when exactly, I guess, does the season for the snake sighting really start to peak? Is this kind of the, the, the game time where we see that? Yeah, generally, you know, April, May, when the temperatures start to get a little bit warmer, your average daily temperatures are in the 60s or 70s or hotter than that. And so snakes have emerged from hibernation and they start moving around on the landscape and we're more likely to come into contact with them. One, because they're out there, but also because we're out there, you know, with warmer temperatures, we want to go outside and move around in the yard, do things like that. Yep. Now with snakes here, I know that North Carolina has six different types of venomous snakes. Most of them are, are not venomous. So how do you know which ones are safe and which ones are no, 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 need to stay away from those. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, the key is learning the patterns of the snakes in your area. Uh, in the Queen City area, you really only have one main venomous species, and that's the copperhead. And so if you can learn the pattern that they have, which is basically an hourglass uh, banding pattern, there we go, perfect picture of one. Looks a little bit like Hershey Kisses on the side of the animal. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you see that hourglass pattern, you know, that's one you, uh, you definitely want to give a wide berth, right? Most of the other species that we see around uh, don't have a full band that goes around their body. They may have blotches or solid pattern, and so they should be less likely uh, to uh, trip you up in, in terms of what they look like. Now, I know we had you on the show a few weeks ago, and one thing you did mention was familiarity, right? The, the better we can identify the snakes and, and maybe having the pictures beforehand, the better we could probably know what exactly we're encountering. But let's say folks are out and about in their yard or they're working on the house. Where would these snakes kind of reside? Mm. Where in the yard would they like to kind of be set up and where should we be more on guard? Well, you know, just like we don't, most of us, not me, but most of us uh, don't necessarily want to run into snakes. Uh, they don't really want to run into us either. You know, they see us as a predator that wants to eat them. So generally speaking, they're going to be hiding somewhere like this snake is hiding in a stump hole here. Uh, they might be hiding it, you know, under a landscape, uh, a piece of log or something like that, or landscape timber uh, or grasses or brush that you have around the edge of your house. Uh, they're not generally want to be in your yard in particular, but they might be moving through, you know, moving from one piece of forest to another piece of forest. Uh, snakes always have some sort of business that they're trying to attend to, right? They're headed to do something. They're, they're, they're either looking for something to eat, something to drink, a place to hide, or a mate. You know, they, they don't have the luxury of just, uh, you know, wandering around for fun. So whenever we see snakes on the landscape, they're in the middle of trying to do something. And you were mentioning it right there where they like to hide. I was reading that you can actually make your lawn less attractive for snakes to come to by removing things of clutter. If you have their little rock piles, things like that to make it, you know, at least attractive to a snake as possible. That's right. A lot of times people have, you know, stacks of metal or stacks of wood along the sides of their house, things like that. If you can try to move those away or, or eliminate them completely, then that's uh, a uh, not a good, I mean, you're removing a good hiding spot for a snake. Yeah. And, and I do want to mention, because even with kind of removing the clutter, doing everything we can avoid, sometimes that encounter is an, 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 a, it's inevitable and it will happen. What happens if, if a snake bite occurs? What would be the next mm. process and the next step to, to taking the proper steps in terms of safety and recovery for both you and the snake? Well, Ted, if I can, I'll, I'll take a step back and try to avoid that bite. And so the way to avoid uh, getting bitten by anything, whether venomous or non-venomous, is to really be super aware of our surroundings, right? So when we're outside, wandering about, 
We want to make sure that we're looking really well where we're putting our feet and our hands and try not to put our hands and feet in places that we can't see. You know, it seems uh, no brainer, right? But a lot of people get caught in those sorts of situations. So especially at night, if you're walking around at night, make sure you have a flashlight, you know, try to put some closed toed shoes on if you can't see when you're walking around, those sorts of things. If you are bitten by a snake, the first thing you want to do is call 911 and then you want to head yourself over to the nearest medical center and let a doctor treat you. It's smart advice right there. As far as if you do come in, in contact with that with that snake, you try to stay away as possible. Say you have a, a venomous snake there. You want to get rid of it. Who do you need to call? Because I was reading 80% of people actually end up with the snake bite because they try to either remove the snake, play with it, or try to kill it. So it's better just to let a professional come in there and say, hey, I have a venomous snake on my property. Can you come get this guy? Absol actually, the absolutely best thing you can do is leave the snake alone. Okay. Because like I said, the snakes are not wanting to stay in a place where they could be near people. So if you give them time and space, those are the two key things. Give them time and space, they're going to move away from those sorts of locations. If you happen to have one that is in your house, then you can call uh, wildlife control agents that can come and remove those. But if you just happen to see a snake in your yard, give it time and space and that animal will relocate somewhere else. It, it really doesn't want to see you any more than you want to see it. I, I, you know, I might be the exception there. <laughs> yeah, I would well, say so. Well, so and that's exactly the approach I wanted to take here because I, we, we were mentioning before about construction happening around the Queen City and a lot of that might be pushing the snakes from their habitat onto others. But I also want to show the flip side here. What about the benefits that snakes provide to our ecosystem, mm. right? Because when you say leave it alone, because it's, it's pivotal into really the ecosystem in which we live. So what are the benefits that these snakes provide for us? Absolutely. Great point. You know, uh, they are predators on lots of different things. Some of those things can be problems for us, like rodents, which can carry different types of diseases. Uh, many snakes, like the rat snake you're seeing right now, uh, eats a variety of types of rodents, rats, mice, uh, other types of small things, chipmunks. Um, and so, uh, you know, th they can help get rid of those things that can be problems for us. There are other snakes like that rough green snake there that actually eat insects that could potentially be uh, pests for crops and things of that nature. So snakes actually do lots of good things in terms of being predators. And then they themselves are prey for lots of other animals, everything from uh, possums to foxes, bobcats, you go down the list. Uh, they are prey for lots of other animals out there. So they really have a very important role in our ecosystems. Jeff, okay, you answered it right there. They play an important role in the <laughs> ecosystems. But I got to ask, because Ted and I are sitting here, most people in the news station, we are <laughs> afraid of snakes. They're, they're not friends to us, but you like snakes. Give us a selling point. Why, why, should, we, why should we like snakes? Because they make my skin crawl. I'm going to say a little bit, but probably, <laughs> probably a lot. What's the sell on snakes? That's all right. You know, a lot of people uh, feel the same way that you do. And I think the key is familiarity, like we've talked about before. The more that you learn about snakes, they're really pretty fascinating animals. The behaviors that they share, the color patterns that they have, uh, they're beautiful. Many of them can be very, very colorful. Um, so learning a little bit about the habits that they have, uh, the things that they do, uh, I just find them fascinating. And I think others might as well. Again, if we can get past that, oh, you know, initial one, <laughs> scare when we see one. Uh, there's a lot to be learned about them and appreciated. I mean, look at that snake right there, Scarlet King Snake. Absolutely beautiful colors. Uh, yeah. I, your your words, beautiful. Uh, for me, <laughs> I'm going to stay away from them. Like I said, I like to call them nope ropes right there, danger noodles. Uh, those are all words <laughs> I use for snakes. But Jeff Hall, we appreciate you joining us, and, and we'll let you do the admiring. We'll do the staying away and let them do their thing. Hands off. <laughs> I can understand that. Thank you, guys.